look who the wind has blown into our studio today. Messrs Paul Eisinger and Peter Alice. Uh, Peter, could the Masters weekend be even better set up than it already is? No, I don't think so. Uh, I've been coming for over 40 years and uh, I've seen it uh, a lot worse than this, but uh, it's frisky. The course is uh, in very good condition, as it always is. Even though they knew the wind was going to blow, 90% of the flags are in almost impossible places, so they haven't become soft-hearted overnight. And uh, we've got some of the best, all, all the best players in the world here. So it, uh, it will be a delight for the Connors, something for everybody. I'm sure it will be. Uh, Paul, I just wonder when we look back at that round for Jordan Spieth yesterday, it was, it was a round of firsts for him, a first four parts and a first time over par, frustrating day for him. But in so many ways, it's opened up this 80th playing of the Masters, hasn't it? Yeah, and he wasn't the only one that struggled. And uh, even though you have a green jacket, there's a lot of pressure here at Augusta National. An inch can mean 40 or 50 yards in some of these holes, like 15, for example. Um, you think you've hit a great shot and it doesn't quite stop and the next thing you know you're on the other side of the lake pitching back over because your ball just rolled in the water. It's a terrifying golf course, uh, one that's difficult to be comfortable on at any moment and uh, with the whole locations and the green speed yesterday, um, it just brought everybody kind of into a, a big cluster. It has indeed. What for you, Peter, has been the most difficult aspect of the conditions? I mean, they must be the worst for at least what Jack, Zach Johnson in 2007, almost a decade now. I don't think we should get carried away with how strong the wind is. I mean, if you've been an old player for a few years, you've been out in a lot worse than this. But it's the condition of the greens, the speed of the greens, the position of the flags, the contours, the way they cut the grass, all sorts of things that normal folk don't take into account. As Paul just said, the 15th, you can think you're safe by 10 or 12 yards. And suddenly it stops and then and it's down there. And uh, it borders unfair, in my opinion. Sometimes it borders on unfair. It, it very frustrating golf course uh, to play, you know, uh, every day, I would think. And uh, every time, and you know, if you play poorly at Augusta, it seems to linger longer for some reason. If you miss a cut at a U.S. Open, you go on the next week, well, I didn't hit my driver while I was in the tall rough. But at Augusta, it feels like it exposes all your weaknesses to me. If you're not a high ball hitter, you can't play at Augusta. If you don't know how to clip it off the tight grass, you're not good at Augusta. And it really does expose your weaknesses. And if you play poorly here, it has a long lasting effect, I feel. And it doesn't help when there's consistently 18 miles per hour winds northwesterly, which is going to be into their faces once again at the par fives. But gusting 25 miles per hour, as it has been the last couple of days. And there could be trouble here, Paul, because this is at the seventh. Just let me show you what's happened to uh, Justin Thomas. This is at the seventh. He's got, what, an eight footer for par, and then the wind just takes this, and that is gone, 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 about 40, 45 feet past. And, uh, and that's the dangerous green, just as we saw last year at, at the Open Championship, the exposed parts of the course, Paul. The 11th green at St. Andrews last year was up and out, out on the peninsula a bit, and it was really exposed by the wind, and seven's up in the air a bit. Straight downwind today, and the hole's cut only three yards over that bunker. Um, it, it is... Uh, you know, it's a game of degrees. It could be inches. fun, boys. It could be that fun. Was the case if, you, if you watch that picture again, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's moving as easy, but he hits the putt and he's like this before he's gone that far. So he's hitting the this down there. So really, if he just did, if 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 if, 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 if well, Jimmy Donaldson said it, but it was one of those to start with. A lot of force carries here at the Masters as well. Absolutely. So your ball flight is, has to be predetermined. And uh, great wind players don't necessarily excel here because you, you can most great wind players you think can change the trajectory of their ball flight. Uh, but here you're required to hit the ball in the air in most cases, whether it's into the wind, downwind, it doesn't matter. And it's all, almost always a force carry. Okay, well, Jamie Dawson's had a four putt at the same green on the seventh. But I should let you know that uh, we are some 20 minutes or so away from the start of the live coverage from our host broadcasters. We'll be going to that. And we've got about 15 minutes until the leading pair of uh, Spieth and McElroy go out. They're out at 10 to 8 your time. But this is how it looks right now. There really isn't that much forward momentum on this leaderboard, as you can see, because we've got Hideki Matsuyama level, having played the first. J.B. Holmes has picked up a shot. So too is Bernard Langer at the age of 58. Great to 
see him. He was tied eighth here a couple of years ago. He just keeps going on. Smiley Kaufman's been uh, doing great things on the PGA Tour, and that's how it looks. But Jordan Spieth is waiting to go out. He's known nothing other than the final pairing at the weekend here. Uh, he's been the outright leader in each of the last six rounds, a perennial front runner, but he had a torrid day yesterday. These were his reflections on that round with Rishi Prasad. Jordan, a very different day today than to yesterday. How do you look back on that 74? Uh, not as a 74, just as uh, uh, we kept the lead, but, you know, I need to learn from kind of what I did on the number five, you know, a few different holes where even though we caught really tough breaks with wind switches and gusts compared to what it should have been doing, uh, I then kind of shot myself in the foot and really gave away two or three shots today off of my decision making on the next strokes. Um, there's nothing you could do about gusting winds. You know, you hope you're on the good side of it more than the bad. But um, I didn't leave myself uh, the correct leaves after that, after being um, in the wrong positions. It cost me a couple shots. I'll learn from that when I'm in that position uh, again because bound to bound to catch the wrong side of gusts um, tomorrow. You know, I'll, I'll do my best to, to make four. Difficult to control the emotions when you're being tested as much as you were today? Yeah, of course, yeah. And then when you still have more difficult holes left and um, you know, you're trying to figure out how to just get the ball in the green. I mean, I didn't hit any greens in regulation today. It just, I mean, not very many at all. And, you know, when you're trying to chip onto these greens and leave the ball in the correct locations, it's just so challenging. And, um, yeah, so that can wear on you a bit. You're leading the Masters going into the weekend. What are you feeling right now? Um, I feel fine. You know, I... Uh, um, when you phrase it that way, you should never say you're disappointed because I'm not. But at the same time, I had a chance today to separate myself a little, and I didn't. So um, it's going to be a, very much a battle these last couple of days. And um, I'm going to want to find a nice, consistent ball flight that I can play in this wind. And then, uh, again, just do what I can to hold the middle of the greens. Last thing, we spoke to Rory McIlroy earlier today, spoke to him about the prospect of locking horns with you, and he said how much he enjoyed that particular prospect. What do you think about that? No disrespect for any of the other players. Yeah, sure. I, I think it'd be very exciting. Um, you know, hopefully uh, the next couple of days bring out one of the better battles that have ever happened here. That would be a lot of fun if I was a part of that. And, um, you know, Rory's proven himself in majors. We're, we have a green jacket already, so I think it'd be, uh, you know, a lot of fun for the both of us, even though it'll be a grind. We look forward to it. Well done today. Appreciate it. Still only 22. Behaves like a veteran, but uh, that was the first time we'd ever seen him shoot over par here at Augusta. Very different day for him. What characterised his round from your point of view, Peter? Well, he just hit a few shots that didn't go in the right place. And uh, Golf is more simple than a lot of us and them try and make out. It becomes very difficult. We're the ones that make it very, very, very difficult, and the conditions make it difficult. If you hit the fairways and hit the greens and you don't three putt, you're a very good player. But I, this is where I disagree with my darling friend here. You've got to hit the ball high. We say 70% of the people who've won the mouse have never hit the ball more than about 20 feet off the ground. People have won here laying up on all the par fives and pitching up. Only about eight people in my, in my memory have ever hit it up there and gone like that. Is they've lengthened the course over the years and it's become more and more obvious, fairly obvious that if you can do that on certain holes, it's very good. Mm. But on the other hand, low ball hitters, particularly when the fairways are running a bit, you look at the list of you only have to look at the list of the names who who were Zach John, he's not a long hitter, not a big ball hitter. And there's some teen of them if you go back thirty or forty years. But it, this is the fascination. Yeah, Spieth appears to be as I said before, from another world, <coughs> there's a calmness about him. Mm. It's almost as if he's got the genes of about 10 geniuses from a thousand years ago. It's you know? true, absolutely. Uh, but you, you talk about that calmness. We're so used to seeing him in control. But there were a couple of moments, particularly with his caddy, Mike Greller, that we haven't seen a great deal of. I know they do bicker, but this was on a different level altogether here. Let's have a listen to what That's happened. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the question I asked you. Now, when you fall out with your partner, I usually give him the silent treatment, but uh, there clearly was none of that <laughs> yesterday, Paul, from, uh, from it, Jordan's perspective. And this isn't new, Jordan Spieth. If you remember two years ago when he had a chance to win here, he did a lot of chirping and talking to his caddy, and uh, you don't even need a broadcast team when Jordan Spieth's playing. He'll give you all the an analogy you need. Um, but uh, it, it's not new to him. People thought he acted like a spoiled brat here two years ago, and last year he won the green jacket and followed up with the U.S. Open, and now he's... Uh, 
you know, he's an old head on a young body. Uh, but that's just kind of the way he is. He likes to deflect. It's about we. It's not I. It's we. And uh, that's a way to deflect. And it's a redirect, I suppose, to take a little bit of the pressure off himself. And that's just the way he, his mentality is and how he surrounded himself with people he trusts. And for him, it's a we philosophy. It is, and here he is practicing on the range. They got about six minutes or so before uh, Jordan and Rory go back out and uh, go to the first tee. But a really fighting performance once again from him, with particularly with that uh, that saving putt at the 18th, wasn't it? Well, it was, and it's a vicious mental battle out there. You know, you don't get a lot of silence in this brain of ours, except in that second and a half of motion is the only time you're really quiet. And as soon as you hit the shot, you look up and you have a rooting interest in that shot. And uh, you got to win these mental fights. And Jordan Spieth, I think, um, he wins a lot of mental battles. When you're standing over a putt like that and you have to make it, if anything negative comes over you, you, you got to fight through that mentally. Um, you got to hit with certainty. you got to stroke the putt with certainty. Commitment isn't swinging harder. Ricky Fowler said it. It's swinging with more certainty. And uh, that's, that's what the best players do when they're playing their best. OK, well, there was plenty of conviction, too, in Rory McIlroy's, uh, maybe Rory McElroy's round, even. It was one of only four under par yesterday. These are his reflections on it. Rory, as tough as conditions were out there today, how much did you enjoy playing those 18 holes? <laughs> I, I enjoyed the back nine, for sure. You know, I got off to a great start and then had a bit of a wobble in the middle of the front nine, um, but kept my comp composure. And, you know, I, I had a goal of trying to, you know, play the front nine and under par and I wasn't able to do that but I knew there was some opportunities coming up you know the likes of 13 and 15 and you know if I could play the, the rest of the holes you know pretty smartly on the back nine um, you know I know I had some chances and, and thankfully I took some and um, you know it leaves me in this position and obviously i um, very happy with that going into the weekend. The round was dotted with some superb moments the big birdie on 16 but how important was that par putt on 18? It was huge um, you know once you know, 18's playing tough. You know, the last few holes are playing really tough. Even 17 downwind, it's going to be very hard to get it close to that hole. And, and 18, you can't aim your ball far enough left to get it onto that fairway because you're just going to hit trees on the left. So it's a tough tee shot. Um, and thankfully, I was able to make uh, make a par there. You know, I boogied it last night and came off disappointed, but obviously feeling a lot better about myself after that. Your golf fans everywhere would love to see you lock horns with Jordan Spieth over the weekend. What would you like to see and how much would that get the juices flowing coming Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Jordan's the defending champion and he's, he's playing great here and he's, he's very comfortable on this golf course. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've got some unfinished business here over the past few years. And, um, you yeah, know, I would look forward to, you know, Jordan's playing very, very well. Um, and, you know, if I were to, to, to have a battle with him the next two days, I'd be... You know, I, I'd enjoy it, and, and hopefully I could just come out on top. Wish you the very best of luck. Well done today. Thank you. Well, there's a grand slam on the line, and it's fascinating to think that uh, Jordan and Rory have played together. Well, here, 2014, the first couple of rounds, but they've never played in any tournament together on the final weekend. And just doing the maths, actually, I was looking at this. Uh, Rory has outscored Jordan by 28 shots when they have been paired together. Interest you, that one? It does. You know, it makes a difference. Sometimes there were guys I played with in my career that I played great in front of, and there were a few players that I didn't play well in front of, and I think that can have an effect on a player going into a situation like this. And here comes Rory making his way from the practice putting up onto the tee. They're squaring up here for the first time at the weekend in any event worldwide. Jordan Spieth, the defending champion. Rory McIlroy, who came very close here five years ago, needs the golfing weekend of his life to claim one of the sport's greatest prizes, the green jacket, and, of course, with it, the career grand slam. And uh, full live coverage of this third round is due to be offered by our host broadcasters in a few minutes from now, but not quite yet. Tantalising, aren't they? But they're on the tee.